All right, Iron Man, 2008, Robert Downey Jr. basically launches the Marvel movie universe. Not basically, owned does. by owned mm-hmm. by Marvel. Yeah, well, those course. characters still existed. Did I ever screw up? I'm ten seconds into the podcast. Oh, you didn't. No, it's. I think it's important to, for history's sake, to say that this movie is the bedrock. Yes. Of the modern superhero movie, superhero movies have been around way before Iron Man. Obviously, you had uh, Nolan's Batman. You had Schumacher's Batman. You had Burton, uh, Burton's Batman. You had, to me the pioneering movie of the superhero genre, which is uh, Donner Superman. But in terms of the modern superhero movie, yeah. the way we know it, Iron Man is the beginning of it to me. My relationship with superhero stuff goes back to the original Batman TV series, which was on all the time with Adam, mm. Adam West and Burt Ward. Adam West and Burt Ward, yeah. Um, foiling Dance. the Riddler. I had a huge crush on Batgirl. Mm. Uh, the Penguin was in there. Yeah. Whole bunch of people. Mr. Freeze. I think Mr. Freeze was in there. I never saw him. It, it, maybe he was. I don't remember him. I think that the villains that I remember were Catwoman. Catwoman. They, had, they, had, they had Catwoman. They had Joker. They had Penguin. They had Riddler. Riddler, was, Riddler was on Riddler so, was yeah, on So it. there's that. Then the Superman movies. Superman 1, Superman 2. And then mm-hmm. we all agreed not to talk about Superman 3 and Superman 4. Yeah, see, they were bad. He, here's the deal. This is one of those nostalgia things. Superman 4 was the first movie of those movies that I remember seeing because... Superman 4, my dad took me to see it in theaters. So when I look back at Superman 4... You look at it finally. Yeah. Like everyone else. Obviously bad, but like... Yeah. Nuclear Man. Right. You know what I mean? John Cryer, the whole nine. It's obviously not a good movie. And the story why the movie is not good is a very deep and detailed story. But... I still was that the nuclear war one? That was yeah, the nuclear war bad. one. Superman takes all the nuclear well, bombs, the 80s, throws them into the sun. For the 80s, our superheroes, which we've discussed before, were Sly Stallone and Arnold... Mm. and Jean-Claude Van Damme yeah. and all Steven Seagal, all these people that uh, were the testosterone superheroes. Stallone had two. He had Rambo and he had Rocky. We mm-hmm. got Cobra right behind you. Cobra, Tried yeah. to do it with Cobra. Um, and it wasn't until Batman came in 89, which we did on the rewatchables, I think like a year ago. Mm-hmm. Then that launched the second wave. We had right. all the Batmans. Then we had the Spider-Man came in. And it Spider-Man feels like- Spider-Man is very important too. I, I mean what I said about Iron Man in terms yeah. of launching the MCU- but the achievement of Sam Raimi and Spider-Man and what they were able to do and the amount of money that that movie made, that is a very important film in terms of, you could argue between that and Iron Man. The movie was just such a big deal. But it launched some bad ones. Some bad Spider-Man movies? It launched some imitators. It launched, what was the Halle Berry one? Catwoman? Catwoman, yeah. It had <laughs> Daredevil. What Daredevil, some... the first one sucked. Yeah, with Ben Affleck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it had... So there was this mid-2000s era where it already felt like the genre was burning itself out. Yeah. And we were taking it as far as it was going to go. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, we had this rejuvenation. Iron Man, which I watched with my son. My son decided he wanted to watch every Marvel movie mm. going... This was like a year and a half ago. Right. By the way, we lasted like four. And then he's like, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm going to go try to find girls. <laughs> um, but we watched Iron Man 1, and I hadn't seen it since it came out. And I was like... This movie is amazing. Uh-huh. This is such a good, well-written, well-constructed, um, just big stars doing their things. Every piece of it, you don't get bored at any point. Mm-hmm. Felt that way watching again this week. Yeah. Just really good. Why can't they all be like this, Van? Well, what are we doing wrong? The stakes of the movies have changed. And the higher the stakes get, the more you have to do to make it compelling to the audience. It's a lot like actually... When you say the stakes have changed, what does that mean? So... Explain that to me as a guy who knows barely anything about this universe. So if I am introducing a comic book character to you, right? So if I'm introducing a comic book character, the stakes don't have to be very high. Yeah. So if when it's an origin story, when it's the first time you meet someone, it can be about them overcoming the things that are orbiting their world. A kid gets bit by a radioactive spider. His parents have money problems. Uh, his uh, uncle have money problems. He tries to go make the money. He can't. Then this happens and then this happens and this happens. How does he come to terms with himself as a hero, right? Kid grows up in France, becomes seven foot five, becomes the number one pick in the <laughs> right. NBA. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. a, it's a contained story. And, you know, his his uncle dies, I'm using the Spider-Man thing, his uncle dies, now he's going to be a hero. That's how he became a hero. Yep. So eventually, that same kid, who's Spider-Man, is going to have to face off against cosmic forces that are trying to destroy the entire universe. The differences between a hero's journey 
and the stakes once a hero is understood and has hero friends and is doing hero things are different. The story gets more complicated to tell. And in comic books, that's why you have your origin, street level contained stories, and then you have your big epics and your cosmic runs and stuff like that. So what happened with Iron Man is this is essentially a movie about a genius who has the world at his fingertips and realizes that everything that he was doing in his life was wrong. He goes from being... He's a moral reckoning. A moral reckoning, a profiteer to a hero. Anytime the story is about how somebody becomes a hero, it's very, very simple to tell. And you don't have to do as much. But when the story becomes about and other characters interacting with them and other villains and all of these things, your margin for error kind of goes down a little bit. And Marvel has been able to do that with diminishing returns in some cases, particularly now. But leading up to what they were able to accomplish in Endgame, it was pretty amazing what they did. Yeah, I think one of the things I like about Iron Man is there's a real authenticity to it. Mm -hmm. Every piece of it, like the fact that they cast Robert Downey Jr., who wasn't exactly smoking hot at the time. But they gave it to Favreau who'd, to direct it, who directed three movies. Right. You know? And it, like two unconventional choices. They go, they get Terrence Howard. You get Gwyneth to play Pepper Potts. Mm -hmm. By the way, we can't wait to talk about her. You like that? Uh, well, I have a lot of Pepper Potts thoughts. Yeah. Um, but... And then Jeff Bridges. Mm -hmm. So they got a real A-lister to be the villain. But, you know, when you do the research on how they made the movie, it takes like almost 18 years to actually make it. And, you know, they kind of stumble into the right decisions. Now, to me, everything feels so orchestrated. And every decision that's made is made with the thought of how it's going to be perceived 15 months from now in all of these different ways. And it really does seem like a franchise. It seems like a turnkey just in general, all of these movies. And I think I, I'd miss the days when we could still have stuff like Iron Man. The, are there still movies that kind of organically become cool, but yet have the backing of Marvel, DC Comics, but you feel like it was an actual authentic journey to get to the point? Um, I would be interested to know what you think about Guardians of the Galaxy 3. and Because I saw it last night and I thought it was amazing. And the, the reason why I would say that is because that's the last movie that James Gunn is doing for Marvel. So mm. he's not going to be with Marvel anymore. He's the head of DC now. And because of that, he was able to do some things in the film that don't have anything to do with the next movie that they're setting up or the next saga that they're going into. Yeah. So it seems like a story that's about the characters instead of the story being about the world. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about. The fact that you have Favreau on this and you have... Robert Downey Jr. on this, and you have Terrence Howard on this, you know that they had a legitimate take, that they were legitimately inspired to tell this story in a very specific way. It wasn't like, hey, plug and play, blow some shit up, and then everybody's going to go eat popcorn and have a good time. They had a way that they want to wanted to make this movie. They had a tone in mind. Yeah. They had a redefinition of the character in mind. They challenged the audience a little they bit. They changed who the villain was. Right. The, with, 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 they challenged the audience a little bit with how Tony Stark acts and who Tony Stark is. And they we had to trust that it was going to be super entertaining, and it was. Now, I'll give you an example of something. Mandalorian Season 3. People didn't like it, right? A lot of people didn't love The Mandalorian Season 3. The story... That's, a, that's a TV show? <laughs> it's a Star Wars television show. Okay, yeah. got okay. it. It's a Star Wars show. <laughs> the got story it. was influenced by the audience's reaction to one character. There's, a, I'm sure you've heard of Baby Yoda, right? Sure. So Baby Yoda becomes a runaway hit. That's the baby version of Yoda. Okay, it's, it's a different character, but <laughs> yes. And so the studio goes, they don't want to put him in season three. They really didn't want to. The studio goes, no, you got to do it. That we have to sell toys. Yeah. You got to do it. We already put them in a video game. Yeah, You, you got to do it. You got to do it. And now when you watch it, it's disjointed because the franchising, like, is butting heads with the story that the creators want to tell. And, like, at the beginning of these things, it's always about what they wanted to do. And then, you know, you lose that after a while. I mean, Favreau didn't stick with Marvel because of this. Like, Josh right. Whedon, who's an asshole, didn't stick with Marvel because of this. Tarantino even had a cup of coffee deciding whether he might be involved in Iron Man in the late 1990s. Facts? Yeah. That would have been crazy. We'll go, we'll go through. Yeah, I didn't Tar know that. Tarantino, I think that would have been ambitious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, it's also a very late 2000s movie, and I mean that in a good way, right? Yeah. We have Middle Eastern villains, and we have weapons, and we have people double-crossing, and, and 
you know, I thought you were a good guy. Wait, you're actually working with the other side and just all of these themes that feel very kind of Bush Cheney era, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's, a and war, it, they, it feels more overt now than it even did in 2008. Yeah. A war on terror sort of underpinning there. My, were we to blame for the terrorism are in the first we to place blame in some because ways? We're arming yes. the terrorists. These, these are 90s, 80s, 90s, 2000s themes. These are when the conversation became about the Iraq war. Iraq, I'm saying it like I'm from Louisiana. I like that. No, that was the issue. When the, the Iraq war. When the, when the conversation became about that and it became about the Taliban or about whatever in, in the 2000s, we were just learning that you know, this happened in Afghanistan with the Russians and these people were involved in it and, and fucking Cheney was there then and Rumsfeld was there then. So all of this talk about, you know, what America's role in arming the rest of the world is and arming enemies uh, oh, to yeah. to Western democracy was, uh, it was something that we were talking about every single night because American kids were dying over in Iraq and Afghanistan. Downey. Mm. It's a lightning in a bottle thing. And he's somebody that, um, I was with him the whole ride in the eighties. Yeah. I tough turf with James Spader. <laughs> I don't even think that's streaming. That's a really good kind of crazy eighties LA mm -hmm. high school movie. He's in weird science. Weird science. Less than he, zero. He was on SNL during the worst SNL season of all time. Mm -hmm. When Lauren Michaels came back to the show and decided I'm going to have this young cast. All of a sudden they have Robert, Downey and Anthony Michael Hall on it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, it's still teenagers, I think. And it just goes off the rails. He's in Back to Back School. Back to School, yeah. With Dangerfield, really funny character. But at that point, he just seemed like the kind of handsome, odd guy, quirky, who's going to be in 80s movies. He's in The Pickup Artist. Less Than Zero was the big one. Less Than Zero and was And then the big one. in real life, he started to bleed into the Less Than Zero character that he plays in that. Who dies? Yeah. That's a... That's a really, 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 really distinct 80s movie that I don't feel like we could do in the rewatchables. That's one of those, if we did that in the rewatchables, Craig would be like, I don't know what just happened in that movie. Why are we doing this? Well, look, it, there's a Brett Easton Ellis era of life to where I'm reading that stuff and that stuff is really being played out. Oh, yeah, that's the 10 year cocaine era. It's the, yeah. yeah, it's like the when you read, you know, I, I read everything that he, that he, that he that he's written. So when you read that stuff and then you look at the commentary that it was about, that's what it was. And all of those guys were going through it at the time. There's a movie that my family really loves that's in there too. Do you remember Chances Are? Oh yeah, that came a little bit later. Oh, was that a little bit later? Chances yeah. Are was well, he was the lead there where yeah. and then we, we don't do movies where people's bodies get swapped after they go to heaven anymore. That was a big deal in the 80s. Like, I, that should come back. Yeah. And then he was in Johnny Be Good with with Anthony Michael Hall playing a high school quarterback who at that point he was probably like 24 and he was Anthony yeah. Michael Hall. That movie didn't work, but it did introduce us to the great room of Thurman. Then he has some issues. Comes back with Chaplin in 1992 and gets Oscar, Oscar nominated. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, he's back. Mm -hmm. And he kind of battles through the 90s. Natural Born Killers is in that. Two Girls and a Guy. U.S. Marshals, mm -hmm. which wasn't, was supposed to be the big fugitive sequel. It never really got there. And then by the 2000s, he settled into like, he's on Ally McBeal for 25 episodes. But that was a big deal when he was I know, but, he, but it's, this well, was supposed to be an A-list movie star. But He was, was in a, the draft. He was in the Leo, yeah. like kind of, this might happen for him. It it's didn't. The, the Leo shit just keeps on with you. You just love Leo. I'm just talking, met Damon <laughs> Affleck, like Downey, <laughs> that was supposed to happen for Downey. Right, you're right. This is what I'm saying. There is something, and we were talking about it a little bit, but, the reason why the Ally McBeal thing was such a big deal is because people were so happy for him. He was right. battling because he was rock bottom so hard. Like he was battling. We know we see we think that we see it now, right? With with celebrities that are, or particularly actors that are going through substance abuse problems or have issues. Robert Downey Jr. For an extended amount of time, about like fifteen years, was yeah. everybody was just wishing the best for this guy, and he was making some monumental mistakes. His addiction had a complete control on his life and a stranglehold on his talent. And so, when he was on Ally McBeal, when that was working, I remember just like everybody was talking about how good he was on the show. Ally McBeal was a big deal at the time, yeah, and how happy they were to see him. And it seemed like he was sober and doing well. You know, but, but he, he wasn't. Pop, he wasn't doing well. He wasn't, and he would pop up and give like. Remember that movie, um, 
Oh, he's in Wonder Boys. He was in Gothica. Black and White. He was in Black and White, the James Toback James, movie. James Toback movie. Like, he popped. And every time you see him, like, God, this guy's a great actor. But it was just, it wasn't So happening. he got his shit together, like, I think 2003 range. Mm -hmm. And then he made Kiss Kiss Bang Bang in yeah. 2005, which became this really beloved, critically acclaimed movie that didn't become a monster movie. But, you know, it was... It's like a weirdly important movie that we'll probably yeah. do on this podcast at some point. But it wasn't until 07, 08, Zodiac, which yeah. is loaded, Fincher, all these great actors, and he's as good as anybody in that. And then he has Iron Man and Tropic Thunder the same year. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he's one of the most famous actors we have. It is, I can't even think of the sports equivalent of the journey that he went on. It's, it, it would almost be like, I'm trying to think of some basketball player or football player who but oh it's a, maybe it's like josh hamilton that texas rangers outfit. that's exactly what it is except if, he wasn't if it able was to like sustain. 10 years later and yeah. then, he, then he started hitting that's 50 exactly homers. who it is because josh hamilton was the same story remember hbo real sports yeah whether or not josh hamilton was gonna ever be able he's to his own play worst enemy his own worst energy his own, and then josh hamilton comes up and for like two years he's mickey mantle but all the guys from downey's era the, you know like the Mike Tyson and Gooden and Strawberry and mm -hmm. Len Bias, like all the people that battled drugs, either they barely made it or they were kind of never the same after they got or they, they died got through it or River, they, or they died like, like, like Len a Bias bunch of yeah. River Phoenix and yeah, that. like they died yeah so Downey uh, I think part of what people responded to with Iron Man although it was an awesome movie was they were so delighted that he got watching somebody reach their potential belatedly mm -hmm. twenty plus years later. It's like, holy shit, this guy's fucking amazing in this movie. To the point that I'm not even sure who else could have been this guy. If it's Matt Damon, it's a different movie. Leo was too young. Clooney, maybe, but I don't... I, there's something about, like, Downey, the miles in, that he work. had in real life. Yeah. I think Tony Stark kind of needed, right? So I was at the bus stop because I was in L.A., but I was... This is how, how long ago this was. I was still riding a bus at this point around Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, I was at the bus stop and I was at Hollywood and Highland waiting for the bus to take me over to Burbank to Capricorn. And they don't have it anymore, but there used to be a little crawler underneath the thing at Hollywood Highland that would give you the news like a fake ass Times Square yeah. or whatever, like a little digital crawl. And it said, Robert Downey Jr. is cast to star in Iron Man or whatever, look, whenever this was. It yeah. wasn't 2008. I think it was, it must Probably have been like 2007, 2007 or yeah. 2006 when I was, I was just, I got out of here in 2006. I said, Robert Downey, and I was like, huh, interesting. Yeah. And this is what I'll say, is I didn't know how they were going to play it. And what, what went through my mind at first was Demon in the Bottle, which is a very famous run of Iron Man where Tony Stark deals with his alcoholism. Mm. And so I thought, are they going to do a whole meta thing where they have Tony Stark in this movie and he's dealing with his addiction and he's dealing with all of this stuff and Robert Downey Jr. is sort of the conduit to the audience by being that we know who he is, right? They didn't. What they did was they based the entire tone and the entire feel of the MCU around one guy's performance. Like, literally, his performance in that movie defines what the MCU became and what it wanted to be. So are you giving me the, this is the most important performance out of all these movies speech? Without a doubt. It's, to me, the MCU is the single biggest filmmaking experiment that's ever happened. Mm. 22, 24, 25 movies, whatever it is now, the amount of cultural capital that it has, the amount of money that they've made, how it's changed probably for the worse, how it's changed film going in the world in America, period, over the time that it's that it's been dominating, as dominant as it is. And all of that, everything, every single thing that the MCU has brought, all of those stories, all of those characters were framed around one guy's performance. Like, it was a complete tone setter. The fact that it's, you have uh, real emotions, but you have a lot of comedy. Yeah. You have characters that you understand that, that you know that the DNA of the character is there, but the actors get to play them in ways that might not be flawed, so... Slightly flawed superhero, slightly but flawed, not over the top. But not over the top, right? And not trying to really... I mean, you got a little preachy at the end, but not really trying to preach to you. Like, all of the movies after this, even, in, even if they were a little bit different, there's still the DNA of Tony Stark in them to me. Like, yeah. all of them. Well, think about this. 2008... 
what's the other movie that came out that year that changed everything? The Dark Knight. Right. Yeah. So you could argue that, I mean, those are probably my two favorite superhero movies. Totally different movies. Right. Right. But I think those are my two favorites yeah. out of anything. Probably that and Superman 2, which we haven't done in oh, the rewatch. Superman 2 yet. is fantastic. Superman 2, when he fucking it, it, decides it, it, to be Clark Kent. That dog. It is. I, nobody has ever been more in the palm of the hand of the person they were dating than Clark Kent. Who's like, yeah, I'll, I'll just give up the Superman thing because I'm in love. Do you remember? What a loser. I can't scene, wait to talk about that movie. Okay, but he didn't want to kill her with his super penis. But do you remember the scene? Is that what it was? That was the underlying thing? No, that's the thing. Remember, he had like super semen? Remember, he becomes human and then the first thing they do is have sex. So That's you think the they, thing. they couldn't have sex? I, I think that he, he... Was he afraid he was going to turn into Superman when they no, had sex? he wanted to be with her and he wanted to make love, but he didn't want it to come out of the back of her back. He didn't want to break right, her spine actually with kill it. her. Yeah, he didn't want to kill her. You know what I mean? He's, he, likes, he likes her a lot. See, this is proving that the superhero movie franchise that should have happened, I've said this to you before, is Plastic Man. Because <laughs> he, he could have... he could. Pull and bend his appendages. Yeah, however he wants. a lot of women. Who who's not dating Plastic Man? A lot of people. All the dating. Kardashians are in a Plastic Man. Absolutely. Well, well if, he, if he was Plastic Brother Man, <laughs> then they might be into him. If he was like, if it was like Jarrell, and then he, <laughs> you know what I mean, they might be into him then. But but like <laughs> Superman two. Think about that movie. Like remember he loses his fucking powers and he gets his ass kicked by that guy in the diner. Right? And you're just like, Jesus Christ, I feel so bad. Those three people, bad. and I was kind of attracted to the female one. The three. Remember? Oh, you like, you're talking about the- The uh, one who's played by Sarah Douglas. Zod. Yeah, it, yeah. I kind of liked her. She was dope. Yeah. But it, like in, in, in like in this movie, like, you know, you have The Dark Knight, which is grounded by this amazing once in a lifetime The Dark Knight's one of the best movies of the century it's, it's, so far. It's great. It's, yeah. it's, it's fantastic, right? But a completely different take. And- Filmmaking in terms of superhero filmmaking, right? The Dark Knight is a bigger deal than Iron Man. It still is a bigger deal than Iron Man. It, it still is. I agree. However, Iron Man's a little more influential. Way more influential. Iron Man is just much more influential than The Dark Knight is in every single way. Downey. That's it. He makes Iron Man and Tropic Thunder in the same year. And, Biggest and star in the world. Then you look at the, his IMDb, and he basically, other than he makes Due Date with Zach Galifianakis, like three years later. Other than that, he's basically just in the comic book universe. Sherlock just, Holmes. Oh, and Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Cashing from 2010 on, he's just cashing checks. Mm -hmm. And I think, it made a crazy amount of money. I think that's what got him at the end. I, he is an actor's actor. Right. And he wants to be respected as so. Because, you know, he did other movies where he's obviously going for the awards. The soloist, remember that joint? Yeah. So he did The Soloist. He did, uh, what's the one where he was with Robert Duvall and Rob Duvall's his dad. He did the judge. the judge. That's one of the only other ones he made the last 10 years. Right. So I think for him, you know, Stark became somewhat of an albatross yeah. because they were leaning on Tony a lot. They stopped making Iron Man movies after Iron Man 3, but he was in Spider-Man. He was in Civil War. He would, they, they were leaning on Stark a lot. And so... You know, it gets to a point to where you're paying a guy a shit ton of money, but he also wants to do some other roles. He probably wants one of those little golden things, and you're not going to get one from Marvel. Okay, so you know all of this, or most of it, but Stan Lee intentionally created Iron Man to be unpopular with the readers because he's mm -hmm. doing it during the Cold War. And he created, he said, I got a hero, represent that to the 100th degree. It was the war, it was military, he was a weapons manufacturer, he was rich, he was an industrialist. I thought it'd be fun to take the kind of character that nobody would like, none of our readers would like, and shove him down their throats and make them like him. And guess what happens? He becomes really popular. Stanley, yeah. good at good at stuff. Stanley and Jack Kirby. Stanley, did. decent, Geniuses. decent at things. Rest in peace. Um, so it doesn't go until 1990 where they decide, hey, let's do let's do a movie. Universal Studios buys it first. By 96, 20th Century Fox has it. Guess who starts sniffing around? Our guy Nick Cage. Nick Cage tried to do every comic book. Yeah, movie. I think in '97 Nick Cage was just grabbing scripts. Yeah, 1998 Tom Cruise did a little sniff. They always wanted him. Yeah. Um. All of a sudden, um, Tarantino in 1999 he's sniffing around. It goes to New Line. The New Line, too many Marvel superheroes in development. So they get it. They talk to Josh Whedon. They talked to Nick Cassavetes in 2004. 
None of it happens. The film rights return to Marvel in November 2005. And Marvel decides we're going to create a studio and this will be the first one and we're going to bet on ourselves here. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. $500 million line of credit from Merrill Lynch. It's really an independent movie. It's really an independent movie. Right. And then they get this deal with Paramount who mm -hmm. co-produced it, this planned six-picture deal, but then Marvel... One of Iger's greatest moves, he buys Marvel. Mm -hmm. So now they have to split the next six. So Disney got the Avengers and Iron Man 3. They're already, uh, Paramount got Aaron, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, the first Avenger. And that was it. And then mm -hmm. Marvel was owned by Disney. Marvel was owned by Disney. All of this happens because the Iron Man, because they bet on, on themselves, which is crazy because they bet on Robert Downey Jr. and the guy from Swingers. Have I ever told you my CD Hollywood promoter story? No. All right, so I don't mean to call this guy CD Hollywood promoter because that's my friend. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to name him, but like he's a friend of mine. I'm at his place. He, Is it Craig? No. <laughs> but, you know, I know a lot of the Hollywood promoters out there that do their things. We've talked about these guys before. These are my guys, Made Entertainment. Yeah. So I'm hanging out with a friend of mine, and he is a man of leisure. So he has a whole apartment at the W Residences. Oh. Actually, a great guy. Um, has a whole apartment at the W Residences that is just like a gaming apartment. Okay. Meaning, you go in there and there were like fucking like roulette tables and all of this, like some real Molly's game shit. Like, pick the like TVs everywhere. And you go in there, he'd be like, yeah, I got 16 parlay. Let's see what Carmelo does right now. You Like, really, it was like a gambler. It was like a fella's den. But there was a separate apartment, his whole apartment, just for gaming. So when I was in his apartment one time, just hanging out, uh, I looked up on the wall and there were like a framed pictures of different Marvel movies. Mm. It's like a framed picture of Iron Man, a framed picture of the Incredible Hulk, like up there, posters, posters of the movies. I'm like, what do you, well, why do you have these? It's like, oh, I've, I'm invested into these movies. Like you, I'm like, you invested into Iron Man? He's like, oh, dude, let me tell you. He's like, yeah, I gave them X amount of money, like I invested into this film. And then it's funny because I was in Vegas the weekend that it came out and I went into the theater in Vegas to see if people were reacting to the movie to see how who was going to see it. And I went to the theater, was nobody in there on Saturday. And I was like, fuck, I'm screwed. Mm. I'm out a bunch of cash. And then he's like, his partner, another friend of mine, says, hey man, it's Vegas on Saturday. Who's going to the movies? Right. So he goes, all right, cool. And so then he comes back, and on Sunday, he says, I go to the Arclight to try oh, to go see yeah. the movie. And you couldn't get in to see it. And he goes, I'm rich. You know what I mean? So that shows you, and I, uh, me and jo Joanna Robinson- That they're just was, grabbing money from That they're different getting money wherever they can. Yeah. Like, uh, me and Joanna Robinson, who has a fantastic book about the MCU coming out, um, uh, who's over at the Ringiverse, like, I told her that story. They were, they were getting money from where they could- to make these films because it was no sure bet. If Iron Man fails, the world, culturally, movies, is so much different right now. They get Favreau, who loses 70 pounds, so he can be in it. He's I always like when directors put themselves in their own movie, but it's not too ostentatious. He's yeah. in it. He's driving uh, Downey around. He wanted to make the ultimate spy movie, and his dream was if Robert Altman had directed Superman, was what he went into it. Huh. Interesting. Uh, wanted to make Iron Man the story of an adult man reinventing himself after discovering the world was more complex and disappointing than maybe he thought. And then he chose Downey because, quote, the best and worst moments of Robert's life have been in the public eye. He has to find an inner balance to overcome obstacles that went far beyond his career. That's Tony Stark. Guess who didn't want to hire Robert Downey? Marvel. <laughs> they were like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> we're not doing that. Right. So Favreau's like, no, this is who we're hiring. Uh, it, this is happening. So then they paid him 500K. Um, and then another thing, they were, they were spending so much time on the story and the action and the suits and whether stuff worked that the script part of things had kind of fallen through. Right. So there's like a lot of improv in this movie. Right. Like that, like Downey and Paltrow just coming up with scenes on the fly. Mm -hmm. Bridges wasn't a huge fan. We'll talk about it. Oh, I can talk about it now. Bridges called it a $200 million student film. Shit. And said, I kind of like having the pages in front of me when I know what I'm at. So right. 
that uh that was the thing um downey said what i usually hate about these superhero movies is when suddenly the guy that you were digging turns into dudley do right and then you're supposed to buy into all this let's go do some good elliot ness stuff what was important for me is not have him change so much that he's unrecognizable when someone used to be a schmuck and they're not anymore hopefully they still have a sense of humor they kind of did that i felt like tony stark i don't i feel like at the character the whole time made sense yeah Sometimes in these superhero movies, something will have this switch will be, and then the guy, oh, I've magically transformed. I always felt like he was Tony Stark in this. Our guy Terrence Howard is in this. Yeah. Um, who has has uh been in some really good movies, but never made it and had a lot of personal issues. So it's interesting that he was like one of the big deals because he's he was the most famous person scalding or, hot right he's probably the most successful person in the movie right. at the time right scalding hot like straight off hustle and flow he crash the crash he's phew, scalding hot at that point so having him in the movie even more than Robert Downey Jr and Gwyneth Paltrow gave the movie some like automatic credibility they get bridges they get Paltrow bridges too of course um Favreau wanted uh, Pepper and Tony to feel like a 1940s comedy kind of sexual attraction, not like mm -hmm. a real one. $140 billion budget made $585.8 million. Yep. Eighth highest in 2008. Our guy Roger Ebert. Four stars. Wow, Raj. Downey's performance is intriguing and unexpected. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's him who powers the liftoff, separating this from other superhero movies. Um... Raves about Downey and then says, by building on that, Favreau found his movie and it's a good one. I agree. Uh, let's do the categories. Most rewatchable scene. Mm. This movie, first like six minutes of this movie, fucking come. Sh I love when movies just start and are really, really good right away. Just give it to you. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's do it, man. <laughs> we're, wait, we're, we're in some <laughs> truck in the Middle East. Let's go. Let's do let's it. Just fucking, let's wear let's the movie, it. dude. Let's oh, wait, fucking make it happen, He's dog. hitting on the driver. Somebody's asking him about Maxim Magazine. Yeah. Oh, the thing's blowing up. Wait, we're going backwards? Yeah. Oh, montage of who this guy is? It's right. great. Great yeah. six minutes. Great, great six minutes. Obviously, Iron Man's first flight. Not his first flight in terms of when he gets hmm. this. I'm talking about the Mark I suit. When that suit first comes out, and fucks over these guys that are from the Ten Rings organization. Are you giving us another scene? Uh, yeah, that's a different rewatchable yeah. scene. Like the whole first part of the movie, you're talking about the assault on Tony and all of that stuff. Well, they're going backwards. I had that scene. The I called that the time to activate the Iron Man suit gimmick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where we get our guy Jensen, he dies, yeah, yeah. but he wants to. Rest he's good with it. He said, "Yeah, my family's already my dead. family's waiting for me." Yeah. I like that the suit kind of gets demolished and goes in nine different directions at the end of it. But if you, that three minutes, it's like, who's not watching that and enjoying it? Yeah. It's just really well executed for, as an action sequence. So the, the, the interesting thing about starting the movie that way with action and then going back and then, uh, building the back, suit, coming back to that. Yeah. Is that, Nobody knows who Iron Man is. Like, if we're being real, Iron Man is a B-list comic book character. Right. Right? So when you go to see a Spider-Man movie, not so much now or any of these other films, Spider-Man, Batman, now they've done it to death. Part of the charm of those movies is the origin story to figuring out, like, well, not figuring out, to seeing why this iteration of the character becomes who they are. Used to be. Now, I never need to see Bruce Wayne's parents get killed again. I never need to see a real Yeah, I'm good with Spider that, too. I'm good with that. In this movie, you have a hero that people aren't as connected with. They're not yeah. as familiar with him. Super rich guy. So if you don't set the stakes of the movie like straight away, you might lose people. Mm. So right away, you get this whole fucking thing. Then it comes back to it. And it was a brilliant way to, to kind of kick the movie off, to give people some meat on the bone at the beginning. I like this. It's not the most rewatchable, but I do like when Pepper Potts sends the Vanity Fair reporter packing i definitely have that on my list because that's pep that's pepper that's pepper gets to that, cook pepper, they clear pepper, out she get pepper they got to clear out you, yeah that was established that's the first time we saw pepper yeah this woman try to play pepper yeah ask Pe like like look look this pepper bitch this woman try to play pepper and act like pepper like oh what you still pricking up his dry cleaning like pepper's the secretary it's like nah I take out the trash 
bitch. Yeah, how including you. Gonna talk you. To me? How you going to talk to me when you wearing the dudes? How you going to talk to me? How, wh- who must you think that you are to talk to me, Pepper Potts, like this? When I'm coming up here, I got a plan B waiting for you right now. Who are you to talk to me? Nice little dig at Vanity Fair, too. Nice little dig at Vanity Fair. <laughs> Shout out to Joanna again. <laughs> but, like, but like, who? who? And we get to see that Pepper ain't to be fucked with. I love right. that scene. I did too. Tony's press conference is fun. The Pepper replacing Tony's heart. Great scene. The is pus. a fucking awesome scene. Yeah. And the the way they do it with the special effects is really convincing. I got the hole in his chest and whatever. Yeah, just her reaching in there and she's yeah. getting in. And I you never for a second are thinking, oh, this is totally fake. This is CJ, whatever it is. I I just really like that. Nothing about this movie is it looks fantastic. It's great. Iron Man is a character that could easily look fucking hokey, dog. Like, yeah. think fucking steel with Shaq. Mm. You know, things came a long way. Iron Man could easily look steel hokey. steel with Shaq rock bottom for superhero movies? It's pretty, it's pretty close. It's way Shout up Shout out there. to Shaquille and his whole family. Yeah, what's Love interesting guys, is Shazam, close. Shazam is actually not that bad. I don't mind it. It's, it's, I mean, look, it's like a C minus D plus. But steel has its steel charm, but that's, that's, a, that's a bad movie, No, though. steel's enough. Yeah. Uh, another one, Tony test drives the flying the new suit thing. That's awesome. I like the ice buildup. Mm-hmm. I like when he lands and he just goes through every floor of the house. And, Doesn't know the suit. Yeah. Crushes the car. Um, Tony wiping out the village when he flies back. Yeah. He zooms back to Afghanistan. Um, almost gets shot down. The training exercise callback joke's good. The Pepper versus Obadiah is good. When she's t- I like when people are trying to download something on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> and and then it's like 90 seconds 90 left. Se- and it's like download 68%. Never fails. Never fa- It's always, wor- always it, works. It ne- it's one scene that it, it never fails. Like, it's great. You're, you're in there. You're looking. You're trying to download it. You see the person walk in. You have boom. to pretend. It's right. like, what are you doing in there, Bob? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'm just checking out my emails. Um, And then him versus... Ironmonger. Bridges at the end. Yeah. Which... I don't know if we had 2023 technology. I don't know if that scene's better or worse. Probably it's, better. It's I, fine. This movie doesn't have a great villain. The movie, no. the, the Obadiah in this movie, who's a character called the Ironmonger, is uh, a villain that Iron Man fans will be familiar with. But the reality of it is the villain in this film is Tony's past. That's really what the villain is. Tony's past is the villain. So the only thing that Obadiah represents is all the uncertainty and all the double dealing that was in Tony's past by being a weapons manufacturer. So there's not like a real villain in this. So if there are flaws in the movie, it could be that the final fight here is a little bit anticlimactic. But it's it's not like nobody's like, oh, 20 minutes left in Iron Man. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm yeah. more excited to see the beginning of it than the end of it. Of course. Yeah. Um, what's your most rewatchable scene? Um, my most rewatchable scene is the entire sequence with Tony as a captive. It's insanely well done. That is when the character of Tony Stark, as we know him in the MCU, is created. Uh, You have Tony in there with somebody who is a victim of his technology. Mm. Remember, when the guy says that we call this the walking death because the shards end up kind of... uh, finding their way through your system and getting to your heart, those are most likely Stark weapons that he's talking about, right? Yeah. And so you have that sort of a victim of Tony save his life. It changes Tony's perspective on what his stuff is doing. Also, you get an all-time stupid fucking villain move. This guy is the greatest weapons engineer in the history of (laughs) humanity. And you're going to give him a way to build a weapon for you. What makes you think this motherfucker's not going to build a weapon to fuck you over? It's I dumb. have that in picking nits. It's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a stretch. But isn't that Obadiah's trying to get, mm-hmm. get him to build something? Like the whole point of it? It doesn't matter, though. I mean, I know that that's the point. It's a bad plan. The po- it's, not a, it's a terrible plan. Like, Obadiah must have thought Tony was a punk bitch. That he wasn't going to try to defend himself, but he ain't no punk bitch. I think my favorites, my favorite part of this movie is the first 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. But um, I like when he activates the suit because I like when superheroes don't totally know what they're doing with the equipment. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a show in the 70s that- Greatest American Hero. Yeah. It's a great on, show. On, on, wait, it didn't on. totally hit. Hold on, don't, don't try to, don't, 
Don't well, I'm older to, than you. I didn't know try, if you knew what Greatest to, American Hero was. Don't, don't, there's a show in the 70s to me, okay? Like, you know, Bill, if it's about superheroes, I'm fucking with it. I, I didn't even know it. I feel attacked with the Greatest American Hero. Like, I used to have a shirt with the symbol on there. Okay. okay? It, it, the iconic theme You're song. You're one of William, Cat, William Cat's biggest fans? I love William Cat. Butch and Sundance, the early years. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I love William Cat. Great theme song. We had some great, great theme songs in the, seven, in the mid-70s, late yeah. 70s, early 80s. Mm -hmm. Just some classics. Um, what's age the best? I Am Iron Man was ad-libbed by Robert Downey Jr. that day. Never knew that. Yeah. It's right. only the ending of the movie. <laughs> I really like all the scenes with Downey and Terrence Howard. And I can't, we'll do, we'll do it later. What happens to Terrence Howard and Iron Man yeah. too. But I really think they have a, I believe in the friendship. Cause sometimes they'll shoehorn in like, oh, this guy's his loyal friend. But I actually liked all their scenes together. I wish I had a Pepper Potts in my life. I know it's a movie and they don't really exist, but wouldn't it be great to just have somebody that, um, if you're a single guy, okay, why are you about, making that look at your I'm face? I'm trying to figure out where this is going. <laughs> well, <laughs> so a single guy, right? He's got this great relationship. Do you don't think I can lay in the plate on this one? I, I want to. I like you. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> You're saying you want a platonic <laughs> female friend? Wait, wait, so wait, no. wait. I, I, I want to hear. I want to hear. Like, I want to see where this is going. Hey, go on, like, let me see. He's he's obviously a disaster. He has twelve backs of models. He only got eleven in the one year, but he right. had twins, so it counts as twelve. He's this rich guy. She's cleaning up. She's kicking out Vanity Fair reporters. Okay, but she just likes him. She's got his back. She defends him. But she's also staying single, waiting for Tony Stark to realize, oh, like, Bill. it's me. I'm Pepper Potts. I'm the one. <laughs> Just, just Can try to get a ruling on this. Hold on, I'm not done. I'm not done. I haven't put the lady gear yet. To me, this is true love. Pepper Potts is like, this is my guy. He's gonna see it someday. Right. I'm just gonna keep putting the time in. He goes down to get her a drink. Never comes back. Did she hold it against him? No. She's like, you know what? This is still my guy, Pepper Potts. <laughs> I'm going to be Pepper Potts Stark. This is going to happen. Okay. And she's just waiting and waiting, and then he finally realizes it. To Rick, me, this is a great rom-com trapped in a superhero movie. Can I get a ruling on this one, Craig? So you essentially want a woman to just kind of wait around while you just have While you do whatever you want for all the time. <laughs> no. Billionaire, playboy. I just, and and like, you know what, guys? I still believe in true love. Right. Exactly right. She's pining for him the whole time. <laughs> also, really good assistant. Uh, becomes really the CEO of the entire took company. His took his fucking heart out and put it back in. Like, just Pepper Potts was she, just yeah, killing she's it. dope. I really like, we talked about um, when you're downloading something, how that always works in a movie. Right. You know what else works? What? The the hero walking in the hot desert waiting to be saved. Yeah. When has that scene not worked Since for like 90 seconds? Fucking Moses. I mean, like, Capricorn <laughs> right. 1, that's the entire movie. It's right. just those guys walking in the desert for mm -hmm. an hour. I, the Mad Money guy is really funny. I love that. They guy. did the Jim Cramer guy. That's yeah. a weapon company. That's, That's a weapon company. Weapons. Weapons. Sell, sell, sell. Um, Tony Stark's house. Wow. I mean, is that the best superhero house of any house? Would you I, still go with Bruce Wayne's Batcave? No. And I, I keep trying to tell you that this is one of the the movie changed everything. Wayne Manor was cool because it was like old and gothic and like a castle where all of these white people didn't live for generations yeah. and they were the best white people ever. They like actually a part in, I think it was uh, Batman Begins where they say, hey, this is where the Waynes used to help smuggle slaves out mm. during the Underground Railroad. And oh, I'm like, no. all right, motherfucker, we get it. They're nice people. Can we just, you know, it's not, it's very, it's not, it's unlikely that they've been five or six generations of Waynes with all that money that are fucking amazing. But this house was not Wayne Manor. It was alive. And it had a cool AI. And you could move stuff around. It was like an anti-Wayne Manor. And apparently Manor. it was only 10 minutes from downtown LA, even though it was in Malibu. Even though it was in Malibu. Yeah, people like, I'm going to shoot on over to, right to there. Tony Stark's house. Right, it's in Malibu, but it's like, it's, it's like very an hour far. 40 <laughs> right. normally. And they're, they're zooming around. And yeah. like, where it's do you, great. There's yeah. no traffic. But it's like a fantastic house, like a really cool house. Bald, bearded, evil Jeff Bridges has aged the best. Yeah, he was cool. He's one of the only times he's played a villain. It's like this in The Vanishing. Did, did he? Oh, The Vanishing. That was a great movie. Uh, he, no, he, he normally goes hero. Craig's in on The Vanishing. I Drink the coffee, I Jeff. I couldn't stop thinking about it the whole time. It you was, want him to turn into The Vanishing yeah. guy? Hello, Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper. The Vanishing's a really good movie. Have you drank the coffee? Middle East terrorists as bad guys in the 2000s. 
um, who are the bad guys now if they do this movie? 2023. Uh, who are like who are the bad guys that nobody is going to probably aliens? It's gonna have to be aliens or somebody yeah, gonna be okay. mad. Um, the Nick Fury cameo was a big deal within the nerd verse. It wasn't a big deal. Like I nutted. Did people stay for the credits? They knew how to stay. Um, they knew not to leave. You know, I don't know why I stayed, but uh, I did stay, and I remember like a, a audible gasm, like Kalika's like. Ugh. What the fuck just happened? I'm like, you don't know? Like, that was Nick Fury and he said Avengers. Samuel Jackson, do you know how much, do you know how much went into that moment? Like, do you have any, do you know, do you, do you know the oh, story? I have all the research. So, yeah, so like, tell it. that, so the ultimate version of the Marvel Universe is a different version than the regular Marvel Universe. The regular Marvel Universe, all the Marvel comics, they did, they did the Ultimates. And when they did the Ultimates, they reinvented all of these characters. Nick Fury was white before for a long time. But in the Ultimates version, he's black with an eye patch. He looks like Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson well, was, Didn't they kind of use his likeness, they though? They did. They and used, he was cool with it because he's Samuel L. Jackson. Well, he's like, I'll get paid eventually. No, but that's not what happened. It was kind of what happened. Samuel L. Jackson brought it up, but then he said that he would be cool with it if when the character made any type of film appearance, if he could play the character, mm. which is what happened. All of that stuff goes into it, and then that's actually on the screen. And he says the Avengers initiative, brilliant, right away. Well, you, they kept it silent. They had it was like they they would release the movie when they did all the uh, pre, the screenings and stuff. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in there because there were rumors about it. I guess for a while, right? That to be honest with you, should be one of the most rewatchable scenes. Like it, it, it because maybe the because that showed you that there was a North Star that they had. I remember just freaking the fuck out when that happened. It took up like a fantastic movie. It's like, it was like the butter cake after you get the steak at Mastro's. You don't think things can get any better, but then here comes butter the butter cake. cake. You know what I'm saying? The 1800 calorie butter cake. Yeah. It's so good. Um, they kept it a secret. Rumors were on the internet immediately and Kevin Feige had to basically take it out of all the preview prints so then nobody knew it was actually happening. So what, what sports moment would you compare it to? Oh, good question. Um, was this like Bird Steals the Ball against Isaiah? Yeah, poor. Is business. it like is it like some college Hail Mary, like the Cordell Stewart Hail Mary? But it has to be super meaningful. Probably more like the Doug Flutie Hail Mary, because that won a national championship. Was this a Hail Mary, or was this like maybe it's some box? Maybe it's like a boxing thing. Maybe it's like some knockout. Oh, you nowhere. know what it is? It's George Foreman. I just saw Big George Foreman over over uh, over Michael Moore. You're supposed to see that with me. What the fuck? Hey, well, I went to the premiere. It was George. Suck. It was George Foreman after Michael Moore because George Foreman was planning yeah. it, but it still was such a. Punch. I can't believe it happened. I can't believe it, it happened, even though yeah. it happened. That makes sense. Uh, the composer, I'm not going to try to say his name. Um, Favreau had this vision of heavy metal music and guitars for the movie, and then mm -hmm. the composer did that. It's got a real energy. This movie, like, yeah. it just feels a little different than the traditional old school. Or like when what we talked about when we did Batman, when that weird Prince scene, when Jack Nichols, the, the bad dance, dance. Like, the, day, the, the day the day the 80s man. died. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else do you have for what's aged the best? Uh I have something that aged the best. I have something I've never done on the rush before. Yeah. Something that aged the best and the worst, the same thing. What is it? The MCU. Mm. The MCU aged perfectly because it was able to like grow in significance and relevance and dominance but then it hit some snags and now it's kind of a chore getting through the movies and so this being the first film of the MCU the MCU itself aged amazingly until it didn't I'm gonna put Pepper Potts down a second Shut time Jesus. I fucking love her you know that's you know Gwyneth's the Wedge Shadow's creator's daughter <laughs> Bruce Paltrow I loved her forever, yeah. Created the White Shadow? Yeah, fuck yeah. What the? My favorite show. Bruce? It's on It's on at 7 a.m. on Channel 6 again? every day. Who's you can watch mom? it every day at 7 a.m. Who's Blythe her? Danner. Blythe Danner's her mom. Bruce yeah. Paltrow is a producer. Right, wow. No, he's showrunner slash creator of the White Shadow and saying elsewhere. Okay. Bruce uh, that's Paltrow. why I always defend Gwyneth when people start dumping on her for goop and what stuff. Do they, I'm like, fuck you. What do, like, what is... Her dad created the White Shadow. I Go never understood yourself. the backlash from goop. Like what's what 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 do, what do people get mad about at Goop about? Because it's expensive. People, yeah, and it, people don't like when celebrities start telling you how to live your life. 
That's never a good idea. So, I, uh, just real quick. And make money on it. Kalika watched this Goop show. Yeah, I guess it was a show about Goop. I don't know what the fuck it was. But anyway, it was uh, fucking Gwyneth Paltrow on there. Yeah. And they were telling people, like, how old they were internally. Yeah. That shit was useful. Let her I'll do tell you another thing. thing. Good food. They have a Goop Cafe. It's pretty good. Yeah, you I look don't like multiple. You. My daughter goes there and eats yeah, it. Yeah, you look like you eat at the Goop I don't, Cafe. I don't eat at the Goop Cafe. My daughter and my wife do. Yeah. The Big Kahuna Burger Award for best use of for food and drink. That's easy. What do you have? The hamburger. Oh, okay. Yeah, like that's an easy one. Yeah. He the, the, he Press conference and a cheeseburger. Because I know motherfuckers who just got out of jail. Yeah. And it is, you think that the first place that they go is like, hey, let me call Sheila. That's not yeah. where they go. Hey, bro. Hey, man, let's go by Popeye's real quick. It's always a cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in Oceans, when Brad Pitt gets out, doesn't he immediately go get a cheeseburger? Yeah. yeah it's, like, it's, all, cheeseburger. It's, it's always, hey, bro. Because, hey, man, let's, let's stop it. Like, they still got over, or they still got the, the, the what crawfish you, spot. What over would there? you do when you got out? I'm trying to think what my food would be. What would my this food? is like where, a am, different... where am I at, though? Let's just say you got dry. You're in... I'm in Baton Rouge or I'm here. No, you're in LA. I'm in LA. Um, damn. Would you go fast food or would you want like a real dinner? Well, I don't want to wait, right? Because I'm not going to, because think about it. If you go somewhere to eat, then you're going to have to wait. You know what I'm I think I'd want to go to Five Guys because I could smell them grilling all the burgers. And five I, Guys, just maybe. really like soak that in versus like a maybe like Shake Shack. To, Tony Stark went to Burger King. I was like, it's a different time. Those yeah. those burgers mattered then. Now those burgers have been. If he was a true LA guy, he would have gone to In and Out. It was a miss. But yeah. you got the wait. In and Out. You could stand there. Oh, the secret menu of In and Out. Oh, cool. So you're 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 a non In and Out person. That's nah, well. fine. It's okay. It's fine. I like Everyone it. needs to settle down with In and Out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Den of Thieves Benihana scene stealing location and the Great Shot Gordo Award are both the same. The Malibu House, when we see the yeah. when uh, the Vanity Fair reporter wakes up and there's just windows and shit, and then we get the wide shot. It's like, whoa, yeah, look how rich this fucking guy Jesus. is. Jesus. And Jarvis is waking, waking yeah. her up. Like you hear Jarvis, like great rich guy stuff. Like, good, we should put that on what saves the best, like rich, elite rich guy, rich guy stuff. stuff. Yeah. Then it's like little garage in the basement where he's just got all these. I don't know, Lamborghinis. We never got to look at all those cars. Can I be honest with you, though? I actually had this at what's age the worst, and I forgot to bring it up. This is one of the last movies where being a billionaire is cool. I had that in what's age the worst. We haven't done what's age the worst Oh, yet. we haven't done what's age the worst yeah. yet. Yeah, sorry. But no, the, this was this is the 2010s. Things shift. Yeah, this is like the last... Because remember, before this, we've talked about this before. Yeah. If you were a billionaire in a movie, you were... You weren't like necessarily the bad guy. No, people would root for you. People root for it. But this like might be the last movie where being a billionaire is cool. Um. Butch's girlfriend award for the weak link of the film. We talked about it already. It's the the ending's fine. It's not great. Mm -hmm. I don't think the showdown with Jeff Bridges and Downey like it's watch really. it. It's fine. It's all right. What's age the worst? Iron Man two is not great. You don't like it? No. It Iron Man three is good. Iron Man three is see. This is where I get controversial with the nerds. With the rest of my nerds, I like Iron Man three. A lot of people don't like it. The nerds don't like Iron Man 3? Not a lot of people. I didn't get that in Nerd Illustrated. I didn't read that article. You haven't seen it. Well, we don't send you the unedited version. Oh, they, the they, they've version all stopped listening anyway at this point. They're so mad that I'm on the Iron Man <laughs> podcast. I'm the host of the show. What do you guys want from me? <laughs> but no, they, um, like, Iron Man 2 this doesn't seem good now. Like, it's a very important movie, but it's not that good. Iron Man 3, I love, but it's a controversial movie. Daddy's facial hair is aged the worst for me. Yeah, like it. Like if Craig came to work tomorrow and was like, here's my new facial hair. And it was a mustache with a little Fu Manchu thing. But then this like kind of half half square thing that yeah. attaches. Like, what the fuck is that? They were trying to go comic accurate. They toned it down after, like way down. Because if you watch Tony in subsequent movies, he still has like the Tony Stark having the, the what do you call the mustache goatee combo? Is that just what you call it? People call it the Fu Manchu, but it's actually called a Van Dyke. But so Fu Manchu is just the, I think the mustache that comes down, but there's no beard. Okay. So they it was aggressive and wide and very dark. And they it got better over time. That's one of the things that got better over it time. It wasn't great. The corporate tie-ins are really shameless, but also it could have put that on one stage the best because it's so funny where it's like, here's oh, it's the Burger King bag. Burger oh, King. look at this awesome Audi. Yeah. Just keeps going. The Audi thing was fucking nuts, bro. Yeah. The the Audi thing because I was in LA and LA is the first place that I actually saw Audis. We have them in, like, then yeah. nobody had an Audi. So Audis were everywhere. Well, Audi, <clears throat> that was a 70s, 80s car that everybody had problems with. My family had an Audi once. 
was mm. in the shop like half the time. Mm. So then it kind of hit rock bottom and bounced back. Um, so Yinsen Stark's going to die and he's like, cool. I have this electromagnetic um, fake heart I've been working on. I'm just going to throw that in there. Good news, I saved your life. Now the shards can't. What's going on with this whole part of the plot? So, remember, he knew how to do it because he'd seen it before. Okay, so he's he's cutting. He's a great doctor. He's cutting Tony's chest bone out by himself. No yeah. nurses, nothing. Mm -hmm. And then takes Tony's heart out and puts this thing in there, and it's like, and we're good. What about the part where the guy builds a mech suit? <laughs> Out of scraps in the desert. I think we're gonna have to. You think to, that's less realistic? Yeah, I think we're gonna okay. have to, like, you know, err on the side of disbelief here. Fine. What else do you have for what stage is the worst? MySpace. <laughs> he gets hit, like, right, <laughs> right at the beginning of the movie. I mean, this is like right in the, right in the, right in the in middle the of the era MySpace. Of that. You know, Zuck was probably so fucking mad when they said that. Yeah. He's probably called somebody over there, smacked their mouth, and was like, yo, why are you talking about fucking MySpace? You know what? Take this gun, kill is that yourself. Your Mark Zuckerberg. That's, that's how. That's how I think Mark Zuckerberg is. I just think he's. Yo, what the fuck? I think. I think Mark Zuckerberg. He puts on like a real controlled face. Yeah. And then when people on around, he's fucking flipping tables over it. He's doing he's all. Gonna kinds come of, after you in the metaverse. You're gonna be in the metaverse one day. He's gonna try to kick your meta ass. Probably will. Um, but no. So MySpace age the worst. Also, Tony is definitely a pre Me Too. Oh. Yeah, he's hitting on the driver immediately. <laughs> he is. He is Every he's pre -two. woman, he's pre two. <laughs> he's definitely pre two. Like the Vanity Fair come, like yeah, I want to fuck you. Like yeah, yeah. I want to see you wake the up. The Vanity anyway. Fair one, she just wakes up and it's like it's time for you to go. And then it's like get her out of there. And then yeah. Pepper comes in. He's immediately weird with Pepper, who works yeah. for him. Yeah, that probably there's some probably HR there's questions. Probably with some Pepper. issues there. <laughs> yeah. now, it works for him because he's handsome and suave and all of that. But yeah, those are the two things that just jump. He loved out the white shadow, so she put up with a lot. Uh, um, the Ron Burgundy flute award for best time for a pee break. I don't know. This movie moves pretty moves well. Too quick, bro. Moves yeah, too I don't. Fast. I didn't really. Yeah, it moves too fast. Like you're gonna miss something important. It's like yeah. very lean, for the most part. Was there a better title for this movie? No. Mm -mm. Best quote: Is it better to be feared or respected? And I say, is it too much to ask for both? It's a good one. Good one. Put mm -hmm. that in your high school yearbooks, stuff, people. The SAS hottest take award. Do you have a hottest take for this movie? Uh, I do, but it might be problematic. But well, we can always edit it out. For some reason, after this movie, Marvel refused to cast a light-skinned black man in a major role. Is that true? This is a great hottest take. I want, like, it, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> stay silent as you I, keep I'm delivering just, it. it. I thought about this last night, right? So Terrence Howard, I thought about Terrence Howard is a so lighter, lighter skinned black guy, light skinned black guy. What about light skinned brothers? And I thought, you know, it didn't work with Terrence Howard. And then they replaced Terrence with Don. Don's a great friend of mine, and Don is fantastic as Rhodey. Brings a humanity, a strength to Rhodey. Then I started to think, you know, is did they ever go back to the light skinned brothers? And I'm thinking, they didn't. I'm thinking about just all the movies. That have so it's past the coincidence point because they've made like eighteen of these. It, just you know, and I I never really advocate for the light skinned brothers to get because for a long time it was just all about them. Yeah, it was all about everything it was about you know motherfucking Shamar Moore and all of that stuff. It just it, and it went on. It, just, it, it, it there was a point where we was like, when's gonna be our time? And then Wesley, they brought it back to everybody. Brought it back to the you know. But I think Marvel. I looked at it. I'm trying to think even now. Marvel didn't go back to the the, the fair skinned brothers. It's like they they judged everyone based on what they had with Terrence Howard. So that's my hottest take. Well, so, first of all, fantastic hottest take. That's exactly what we're looking for. You, <laughs> okay. No, I'm mean, like that was a hot one. <laughs> when when somebody has to ask, okay, I might not be able to deliver the hottest take. That's where I want to be with the hottest take. Yeah. So when there's just, trepidation even before the hottest take. I was just thinking about that last night, I was like, huh. You know, they're, they're, it's not like it's a ton of roles to choose from, and they've been lighter skins. It's justice for my light skin brothers, man. They haven't really gotten a chance to shine in Marvel like that. But how many movies have there been? So there's so there was Falcon, who's played by Anthony Mackie. 
There's Mordo, who's played by Chiwetel um, in in um, in um, in Doctor Strange. There's uh, Brian Tyree Henry, who's in the Eternals. There's um, I'm trying to think of more. Obviously, Black Panther. Black Panther. I mean, you know, probably not gonna have very many light skinned brothers. Uh, but but you know what I mean. <laughs> you have you have Black Panther. You have you know it just over the time. I just haven't. It, it just never went back to it. I was thinking about that. I don't know why that popped in my mind last night. It popped in my mind last night. I don't think it's something that they're purposefully doing. My people come in all it's, shapes. It's a great how to stay. Colors and all of that. I was like, you know, the shades. I'm like, you know, it, it just... Juliet just, still has the hottest take title for saying the girl from Knocked Up should just had an abortion. That Jesus was, that was, Christ! That was, that was... That's the hottest we've ever gotten. It got to 300 degrees for that one. It was great. She delivered it perfectly. Um, Wait a minute. Yeah. What does she want to marry Seth Rogen's character for? It's a great... It's, it's, it was a great angle. Um, <laughs> okay. George Clooney, mid-2000s. This is my hottest take. He makes Good Night and Good Luck, whatever. Syriana, the good German... Ocean's 13, makes Michael Clayton, he makes Leatherheads, yeah. Burn After Reading. He needed one of these, I feel like. Needed Clooney. what? He needed, like Clooney and Iron Man, if he had said, you know what, I'll take 500K and I'll do Iron Man, they would have taken George Clooney over Robert Downey, I think. Can you think of reasons why George Clooney might have not wanted to make another superhero movie? Yeah, let's go. Let's get back. Well, let me do this correctly. It almost ruined his career. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> so same for Ben Affleck. Daredevil right. almost ruined his career. So he, he, went back. He, came, he went back. You he know went back. what? You're a competitor. You're okay. an athlete. Come back. Put yeah. the fucking helmet on again, George Clooney. George Clooney. I could say he made Leatherheads. I could see him as Tony. Leatherhead sucks. I could see him as Tony Stark. It's still it's still better with Robert Downey Jr. But there's something he could have brought to. The I world. think Clooney could have pulled this movie off. You think so? Yeah, it's basically Danny Ocean with toys. Yeah, but Danny Ocean with like Danny Ocean is like and some damage way cooler. Like Danny Ocean is like super like almost cool to the point of dripping off the screen cool. But I think he could have done it, of course. Uh, some acting awards quickly: the Ruffalo, Hannah, Rubinek, Partridge overacting award. Uh, the any ten rings leader kind of dials it up. Yeah, well, I mean, you gotta be scary. Yeah, he's he's dialing it up. Yeah. Um, best that guy award. The any the that guy's name is Raza, and then Clark Gregg, I think, is our winner. Yeah, Colson, I think most, because a lot yeah. of people know he's Clark Gregg, but also he's kind of that guy. He became Clark Gregg because of Beca Colson. maybe he became Clark Gregg. Yeah, yeah. but he's he definitely is uh, that guy. Dan Waiters award was tough. There wasn't anybody who came in off the bench throwing a hundred, but it just went nuts on this one. I can't think of any. Yeah, casting what ifs. Favreau wanted Sam Rockwell initially because. People like Sam Rockwell in the mid two thousands, and then Downey killed it on the screen test, and that was that. Favreau's first choice for Pepper Potts was not Gwyneth Paltrow; it was Rachel McAdams. Oh, or she made her way into the MCU anyway. Turned it down. Interesting. Mistake. She came back. She came back. She Mistake. came back. She's in Doctor Strange. Christine. I think it would have been better to be Pepper Potts. Maybe uh, I'm crazy. Would have been fucking way better. Yeah, to be Pepper Potts, but. Terrence Howard, highest paid actor in the set, promised a three picture deal, shut out of the sequel. Marvel's never commented. He's commented. Favreau uh, was reportedly unhappy with Howard's performance and they had to reshoot some stuff. And Howard made a big stink about it and then later admitted that they offered him a lower salary for the sequel and that's why he didn't want to do it. He once said about it that the contracts in Hollywood are not worth the paper that they are printed on in reference to what happened with him and his relationship with Marvel over this role. He was not happy. So why were people unhappy with his performance? Because I know nothing and I really liked him I and know, I thought he was good. I liked it. But did you think he was good? I, I mean, Cheadle's uh, different. And Cheadle's, different. Too, but... Cheadle's different and Don is Don owns Rhodey now. Yeah. Don seems like now you can't, you don't even think Don. So maybe owns they're Rhodey. thinking like, all right, we don't want to make nine movies with this guy. He I has some no baggage. Clue. I don't understand. It. I don't know. I don't know what else was going on. But like at that time, you know, it, they even tease War Machine in the movie. Like not this time, but like when he looks at the suit. So you thought it was going to be, you know, him in Iron Man 2. Recasting couch. We could do better with the Vanity Fair reporter. Like, we could have... That could have been Rachel McAdams. That could have been Scarlett Johansson. That lady was popping at the time. What's her name? Leslie Bibb. Leslie Bibb. She's fine. 
Yeah, she's. She, they could have. We could have. I fifteen years later, I you know her. She never. Who are you put in it? I'm saying let's go big. Let's put Scarlett in there for three scenes. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, but then you you blow your wad on Black Widow. Well, I don't care about Black Widow. I just care about this movie. I'm only casting <laughs> this movie. I don't care what happens with Black. Scarlett Widow. Johansson was too big of a deal to put her in that movie at that point, right? Yeah, little. Well, it's like whoa, she's in this as the Vanity Fair reporter. We're loading up. <laughs> I had another one. I wouldn't want to get rid of uh, my girl Gwyneth, but. Jessica Chastain would have been interesting for for Pepper Potts. Would have been really interesting. I love her. Redhead. Was We've she never around? Seen in a movie like, yeah, she's around. Had never really made it. The the Zero Dark Thirty or whatever was that the that was the movie that she blew up in, right? Yeah. So it was Zero that was Dark a couple 30, years later. But she was in that movie. The first time I ever saw. Her, remember that movie Lawless with Tom Hardy? Yeah. So that's the first time I remember seeing. Oh, oh no, no, no. no it she's was in the Help. The, isn't she? That's yeah, late in the hell. That was a 2011, I think. Yeah, yeah. but Iron Man. But she's around for a couple. Of years. Maybe she wasn't famous. But, but she was. Wait, wait. No, that's not. You no, know, Tree of Life is the first time I saw her. You remember that stupid joint? It was kind of crazy. You remember Brad Pitt? And it was um. Yeah. What's his face? And I didn't the, think that movie was good. That's also 11. Tree of Life is 11. Yeah. Hold on. Tree of Life. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Chastain Pitt. Sean Penn. So what? What's Chastain doing in like 08? What was what? What? What happened with Law? When did Lawless come out? I don't know if Chastain was around. Even zero. 2012, Lawless. Okay, so th the first time I ever saw Jessica Chastain was in that Tree of Life. Yeah, movie. she wasn't famous enough yet. She yeah, doesn't really. She was there Stolen yet. was the first time she was in a movie we would have seen. So the I other one I was thinking, that. and it's probably too early for her, is if Beth from Yellowstone was Pepper Potts. <laughs> Beth from Yellowstone was dope. I like her. Because <laughs> I've been watching Flight, I've been scouting Flight for the rewatchables. And Beth from Yellowstone is in flight. She plays like basically like test driving Beth from Yellowstone as a yeah. character in that. And uh, I just really like that actress. Flight is a crazy fucking movie. Flight is fucking fantastic. Flight is a crazy. I, for me, it's a rewatchable, movie. but I don't know if that makes me a bad person. I love that oh, movie. Right. That movie was you're invited so on the nuts. flight rewatchable. Flight is Great. so fucking crazy. I, as you know, Denzel is in my uh, my Mount Rushmore. All right, half fast internet research. I just enjoyed this little tidbit. Favreau and Downey were given a tour of SpaceX by Elon Musk as they were working on this movie. Interesting. Hmm. They made Mandarin the villain in the sequel. Kinda. Which was supposed to be the, the guy in the original. I had, I don't understand the nerdverse elements of this. So the Mandarin is Iron Man's biggest villain? Yeah. And he uh, is the leader of the Ten Rings organization. So what they did in the second movie is they took a character called Aldrich Killian who is the head of advanced idea mechanics, this really, this kind of like evil think tank in Marvel. And they made him the Mandarin. They had uh, Ben Kingsley as the Mandarin, but he was a fake Mandarin. So he looked like the Mandarin. Bang, you can't trust Ben Kingsley in fake, any movie. He's a fake Mandarin. Yeah. Okay? And so then the actual Mandarin, who's the leader of whatever was causing all the problems, was Aldrich Killer. Killer Aldrich Killian, who was played by um, Guy Pierce. Now, they actually came back to this because later on in Shang-Chi, the leader of the Ten Rings organization is Shang-Chi's father, okay? And he has been for thousands of years. He has the Ten Rings. And then Trevor Slattery, who did Ben Kingsley played in Iron Man 3, comes back as his kind of funny actor type of, uh, of role. So it was the Mandarin but not a comic version of the Mandarin who has the Ten Rings, that was in Shang-Chi, not till like 14 years later or 15 years later. Where do you stand on Ben Kingsley? Like overall, I think yeah. he's amazing. And he was really funny in the movie too, in Shang-Chi. Like really funny. He's in our movie. What movie? The movie we're doing in a couple, in a couple, I think three months. Searching for Bobby Fischer. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's kind of an asshole. <laughs> that is going to be a one for us. Right. <laughs> He like, he's fucking really demolishing <laughs> like, that kid emotionally. He's fucking a jerk in that one a little bit. <laughs> he's also in Species, which is like one of the great bad Wait, movies. Wait, what? I don't remember him. Oh, he's Species. The, he's the leader in Species. It's him, species, species Madsen, with a, Mark Helgenberger. Natasha Hintridge yeah. as the fucking alien or whatever. Craig, have you seen Species? I'm going to do Species for Rewatchables just for Craig's reaction to Species. Species was crazy. Like It was like a big deal because she was so hot or whatever. I can only remember. I only saw it one time. I don't remember Ben Kingsley. I really don't. Uh, so we, there's a lot of stuff about the the suit and the stages, and the, we, we don't need to go in all of that. This is interesting, though. It was filmed in L.A. because Favreau thought too many comic book movies were set in the East Coast, 
and thought LA would be a better setting. And that prompted at least a couple of LA movies after that. The, the advertising stuff we have, Sega had a video game. There's a big Super Bowl spot. Hasbro did the toys. We had 7-Eleven, LG, Worldwide, Burger King, Audi over and over again. All the comics, like they really executed a master giant big Iron Man plan and it worked. MTV, MTV Movie Awards that year? Yeah, they Donnie did a lot. Donnie showed up. Funny sketch. DVDs, also the the last real peak of DVDs, they sold 4 million in the first week. Jesus. They made nine, sold 9 million total and made 160 million just on the DVDs, not including Blu-ray. This was the last film special effects expert Stan Winston made before he died, which is a, a big deal for yeah, people who know huge. about special effects people. The Iron Man, the first thing weighed 90 pounds, that first suit. Mm. The actor asked Tony what happened in Afghanistan during the press conference is Billy Eilish's father. Or not the press conference, the, uh, the, what, the, what, what scene was that? When yeah, I think asked, it was a press conference. Yeah, press it was conference. a press conference yeah, yeah. where he goes to talk to everybody. It's Billy Eilish's father. What? Apparently. What? <laughs> Listen, this is half faster than research, but that's what popped up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the only Iron Man film that features no martial arts fights. Huh? Yeah. He gets big into martial arts after this. The Vanity Fair reporter in the comic books works for the Daily Bugle. Yes, because the Daily Bugle is the paper of record in Marvel. But you can't use the Daily Bugle right. because that's Sony. For Iron Man's aero movements, they had these animators studying skydivers performing in a vertical wind tunnel to figure out all the... How he's going to look. Go and the fact that, fast, slow, all that stuff. You know what's funny? It's like the all of that stuff... Like added to the realism of it, the fact yeah. that he wasn't flying smooth and he's stabilizing himself, even when he's an expert flyer, he's flying from his repulsors and or and, and he it looks like he's you know fighting against the physics it's of what realistic. it would be like. Yeah, Apex Mountain, Downey, yes, yeah, for sure. Favreau, yes. Wait a minute, could I make an argument for Mando that um no not for Mando? Can I make an argument that? Downey's Apex Mountain is Avengers Endgame? No. You can't. <laughs> Actually. I'm rejecting it. It's the big, it's like the, it's the highest the whole point of Apex, of all time. But the whole point of Apex Mountain is not only is this a career mega highlight, but you have more juice after the, the movie than, than ever. any time okay. in your career. Okay, so you have more juice after you do this. After he does time. this movie, He's got, the world okay. is his fucking oyster That's from okay. that point on. That's fine. By that, yeah, for sure. And I say the same for Favreau. Favreau was hosting fucking Table for Five in the late 90s and scrapping it and making nah, movies I mean, like Made. Yeah. And all of a sudden, now it's like, oh, I am now an A-plus list director who made this monster movie. I like it when he makes small movies, though. I love Chef. I love Made. Chef's good. Chef is good. You like Made? I can never get there with Made. I like Made. I like Made just because Made is just a, a fucking dissertation in early 2000s cinema. Yeah. Puff pops up in that bitch. Have you it, seen Made, Craig? No, love Chef, though. Yeah. Maybe. Chef's good. Chef's good. I like Chef. Terrence Howard, probably not. It's probably a couple years earlier. Hustle and Flow. It's in that mid-2000s, Hustle and Flow. Yeah. He's in Crash. Hustle and Flow. Paltrow, no. No. Bridges, no. The Apogee Awards, I think, yes, because I don't know what those are. I don't think those are real awards. I don't think so either. This is the apex for those. The Ten Rings terrorist organization? Shang-Chi. Ray's Pizza? From New York? Yeah. Yeah. They, he goes and gets raised pizza because he's a fucking rich guy in Malibu and he can do shit like fly raised pizza. Yeah. Um, but raised pizza, Favreau loved. It was the second movie he'd put raised pizza in because they had an elf too. Hollywood comebacks. I was thinking about this, whether this was the biggest Hollywood comeback of all time. And I don't, I think the answer is probably no, but I think it's in the discussion. Well, what, what, think about one that's bigger. So Brendan Fraser. I was thinking Affleck getting the Argo, Argo being best film, winning the Oscar and making a ton of money. You're such a homer. Elizabeth Taylor had this a couple. This guy almost died. And you're talking about Affleck made like a couple of bad movies and he came back. He was done. His career was over. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, um, Hollywood okay. Comeback. Who okay. else? Uh, Mickey Rourke. The Wrestler. Is that is that like a life-altering movie though? But I mean, he was 
he was dead in the water. He hadn't worked in years. You know what I mean? Okay, but okay, let's let's stay there though. So it's kind of like so Mickey Rourke, Brendan Fraser is a big comeback. Who else? It's got to be somebody who was a very famous, very famous something, and then hit rock bottom and came back. Uh, hit rock bottom. And I think came back. I don't know enough about the '50s, '60s people, but I think people like Betty Davis and Rita Hayworth, Elizabeth Taylor. Fuck like there was a lot of those in that yeah, yeah, yeah. in that era. Wasn't Brando kind of like on the outs for a while before Godfather? Is that true? He was. Yeah, that's a pr- Brando's a pretty good one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a good one. Brando's a good one. There's there's got to be more because uh, oh oh uh, oh I got one. I got a good one. Fantasy's just going to come flying through the window he's right gonna, now. He's going to break through. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Iron Man. He's Bro, like, oh, my suit's activating. I got a classic one. Yeah. Travolta, Pulp Fiction. Oh, Ooh. Travolta's the best. You're yeah, right. like, yeah, Travolta, Travolta, Pulp Fiction. I can't yeah. believe that took us That's pretty good. two Keaton, minutes. Keaton, Michael Keaton, not bad. Not pa- yeah. Michael Keaton, not bad either. Travolta. Travolta's the best one, though. Travolta is... Because like even when Russell Westbrook expected. was coming back on the Clippers, I was calling him Vincent Vega Westbrook <laughs> right, on my, right. my podcast. Mm-hmm. Um... Comic Con, Apex Mountain. Oh man! Um, so Favreau goes there in 06 before they even made the movie, and then in 07 just to like whet everybody's appetite and spray some Iron Man juice around, and people like lost their fucking minds. Because that's um, what happens at Comic Con. They just said you go in there and just spray some Iron Man juice. Come yeah, on, everybody, get, get excited! Here's my 90 <laughs> second trailer. <laughs> the nerds like, oh, right. Oh, uh, was gonna say, um, you know, Comic Con. Yeah, maybe. I, I've been to Comic Con a bunch of times, and there was there's a part where Comic Con like lost its soul. Yes, but Comic Con that's when, like South by Southwest. But Comic Con when the Avengers was was a so you think that's it could okay. be yeah. Malibu houses and movies. I think this has to be number one. I can't think of I'm trying to think ones. of a maybe houses in general in a movie. That's fucking. It looks like Doctor Evil's compound it was like crossed with a beach house. It was like its own character. It's unbelievable. Yeah, best racehorse name. Jericho? Good racehorse name. Tony Stark? What if it was just a horse named Tony Stark? Pepper Potts is a good racehorse. Pepper horse. Potts is a great Philly name. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Ironmonger? Yeah, but then there's like an evil, you feel like Ironmonger's gonna fuck <laughs> with the other horses. <laughs> <laughs> it's like coming out of the thingies. Pick and nits. I can't wait for this. Okay. I have so many for you. Why was Tony demonstrating the new Jericho missile in Afghanistan? He's worth like a kajillion dollars. Mm. They couldn't have just sent a video. He's got to go there. Like we're in the middle of a war. He's got, he's in a car with like three people. Huh. Like what is he doing? I don't know anything about how they do that. Do they, do they typically like test these weapons on American soil? I don't know. I don't know why how they would, I don't know anything about it. It's I ridiculous. don't know nothing about it. Um, this one drove me crazy. Why doesn't Tony have like a full beard after three months? <laughs> In a fucking good. cave. He's got he's still got the good facial hair. But it was no it was, hard it, it, it was, to have that. It was scraggly though. Was it? It was a little scraggly. It was scraggled, scraggled. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't he be like actual like full beard? What did that with the the fucking was he terrorist shaving? gave him like, he, like oh here's bitch? here's a new Gillette here's Mach a, five. Uh, Gillette fucking uh want some good shaving Fusion cream? Pro-Glide? Do you have sensitive skin, Tony? Or right. do you want just regular shaving cream? It would just be weird to want to shave, like shaving with the shards. But would it grow in in three months? You tell me. Three months will be pretty if he, much. Yeah. Puberty, he's gonna have some fucking facial hair. <laughs> um. All right, so he has this electromagnetic heart that is made for him by Jensen in a cave. Yeah. Comes back to LA, back to business. Like, not gonna see a couple heart surgeons. Like, hey, man. So I got this electromagnetic heart. Right. Um. Just wanted you to check this out. Is it any, any side effects? Like, is there an infection in there? It's not going to any doctors. He gets infected in yeah. Iron Man too. No doctors? He doesn't want to go to the doctor. He wants to go. Remember, she says you should go to the hospital. He wants to go straight to talk to the people. So, I mean, look, it's, it was working for him. He's the, once again, part of the character. He's the smartest engineer mm. in the world. The traffic is appalling in this movie. At one point at night, he goes from Malibu to downtown LA in his fancy Audi. He's just weaving through cars 100 Stupid. miles an hour. It's like... I, the only time Stupid. that there's two times ever in the 20 years I've been in LA where you've been able to drive like that. Carmageddon, one of the greatest weeks of my entire life. That was dope. I loved it. I went, I think, 110 on the <laughs> I 10. And, and then COVID. Yeah, COVID, the first two months of COVID was drove unbelievable. Everywhere. So great. Drove everywhere. It was like, whoa, look no at smog. LA. I'm He's like, flying Jesus around. Christ. Yeah, no smog. Yeah, no smog. Kalika would be like, where are you at? I'm like, Rancho Cucamonga. 
I'm just driving. Like why? Like, why? I didn't say that. I was just get in the car and drive just, around. Like just drive, drive, drive. It was so it was so great. Everybody was afraid to drive. Anyway, all right. Here's a good one. Pepper Potts, still single. No, not dating anybody. Well, remember, Bill, she's true tiny. love, right? <laughs> for my guy Tony, true love. She's just waiting but for not, him. Nobody, like, not on a couple dates, just nothing. Yeah, it was. It was implied like two that dates she with Rich Paul might have had Rich Paul. Rich Paul would be all over that. <laughs> Rich Paul, like, if if that was if this was real, Rich Paul would definitely have Who's Rich Paul. Pots. Daddy, pepper pots, pepper pots. And you, look, it's, it, walking down the red carpet, she could date a Dodger Paul with uh, the, the, it, like. Clayton oh, Kershaw couldn't have gotten in you there? You already figured this out. You said yeah, that she's right. in love. Well, you she's sitting point. on it until Tony comes around. All right, here's another nitpick. Tony can get cell phones, cell phone calls in his Iron Man suit while he's going 890 miles an hour in the Middle East. Yeah, he's... Uh, the, what kind of cell phone service is that? Yo, Bill, the, fl- the fucking suit can fly, dog. Okay? Okay. It's a suit that can Just, fly. And it's got 5G? It's power source. The 5G <laughs> is the least of it. He, you know how fast he's going? <laughs> right, he's going pretty fast, but like it's basically like a little plane, right? You can get cell signal in a plane, can't you? Fine. Um, why didn't Tony's Malibu house have better security? People are just waltzing in there. He's uh, in this crazy Doctor Evil compound, but Obadiah is just waltzing in. But Obadiah has Terrence Howard's just waltzing in. But these guys have security clearance at his crib. The next, the like the next house. Because remember, well, no, because Nick Fury does it too. At the end, Nick Fury bypasses. Nick Fury goes <laughs> waltzing in. Nick, but super spy, but Nick Fury bypasses it too. So maybe it could have been better. This is the leading technology expert we have, and anyone can get into this house. In the, other two, the other people have clearance at his crib. Nick Fury is just a spy. Tony's in Afghanistan. Let's go party in his house. He won't even know. How long would Tony live without a heart when, like, they pull the heart out? And it's like, oh, Tony's going in cardiac arrest. I Just wouldn't you immediately die? I don't, I don't think he doesn't have a heart. He he, he does. He has a heart. He had, That thing is stopping the shards of metal from getting to his heart. Yeah. He has a heart. Yeah. They didn't take his heart out. But so then why is the hole so big? The hole is big because he had to create an arc reactor, and that's as small as he could get it at that point. I think in that, like that hole looks like you could put a fucking basketball in it. But the heart, the hole. <laughs> I, don't, I thought they took his heart he out. Doesn't, he doesn't. He doesn't. He, he has the, the shards of metal. If they get to his heart, they'll kill him. So he's they're keeping him out of him. They fixed this in Iron Man three. It's no more. Okay. But up to that point, I guess. Well, I was confused, and I'm right. a relatively smart person. Right, but yeah, I get it. What I'm saying is like you know the arc reactor isn't powering his body. His heart is still pumping. Just had more questions about that electromagnetic heart holder, whatever the hell it. that was. No, I just, I didn't fully understand it. <laughs> so Tony learns how to use the suit for weeks. Yeah. Just in the basement, crashing around. Obadiah puts that fucking thing on. He's ready to roll. Intuitive. Obadiah is fucking, he has the iPhone of suits. He's ready. He's like fucking. We don't know how long he was practicing. You know, maybe he was in it before. He when just it was got the heart. He yeah. didn't even get to use the suit because he didn't have the fake heart for it. Yeah. <laughs> Any other picking nits? Nah, just the ones that I brought up. Just, you know, th- th- continuously making bad decisions, giving the smartest guy in the world a chance to build a weapon. That's always been the biggest nit that I would pick, like, with this movie. Sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all black cast are untouchable. Well, they've made plenty of sequels. Mm-hmm. I did think with the all black cast thing, if Pepper Potts was black, how that would go. I don't know if Pepper you want to. If she was black, she definitely wouldn't be waiting for a dude to kind of like come love her. Her homegirls would be like, "Nah, it's like I'm. It's my birthday. You gotta, you gotta put in your two weeks with Tony. It's like, it's like, it's my birthday. It's like I'm. I, I, I think this might be the day that Tony asked me out. Fuck him. <laughs> You've been waiting for a long time. My cousin Ben trying to take you out. Fuck him. They would be mean to Tony, her friends. We were at a party. We had this dance. He went to get me a drink, and then I never saw him again. Never saw him again. Cut him out. He ain't shit. Sisters don't play that goddamn shit. And they're not going for that. Waiting for your boss. Is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Catherine Hines, Steve Buscemi, Sam Jackson, J.T. Walsh, or Philip Baker Hall? We don't have Chris to do Wayne Jenkins here. It does have Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson's in the movie. This movie was better with Sam Jackson. With Sam Jackson. Shoehorned in. He makes it better. In the last scene. Just one Oscar, who gets it? Tony. Downey? 
Tony, yeah. 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 Without a doubt. All right, I have three unanswerable, probably unanswerable questions for you. Maybe you'll be able to answer them. Where did Pepper Potts live? I mean, where she live? No, let's actually like really try to figure out where she lived. Pepper Potts. She's got to go to Malibu to the house. There's the the downtown LA is where Stark Industries is. So what are you thinking? Like Beverly Wood? So she's got to be able to get to Tony's. She needs to be near the I-10 in both ways. This is going to be an LA-centric conversation so she's for the gotta, audience. She's got to be able to get to Tony's. I think she needs to be like Beverly Wood, Culver City, kind of overland exit area. But she's got to get to downtown. This yeah. is a nightmare. She's Yeah, that's, I mean, because she's got to be able to... Kind of need to be near she's both, be able to right? Get to hit the Maybe Santa and go Monica? West. Yeah, but think about having to go downtown from Santa Monica every day. So, probably lives like off Montana. Uh, like yeah, where my friend Daniel lives. But you're probably going to be a little bit further. Since you can in. do like rich white white lady stuff on like Sundays. Pico, like Pico La Cienega area, like Fox Studios, Cheviot Hills, maybe. Cheviot Hills would be a good one. She's Chevy- got like a nice little boom. Cheviot Hills get straight up to ten to downtown. Because yeah, Santa Monica, you. Because if she's just pining for Tony every night, you kind of need to be near the action more. How right. much money do you think Pepper Potts makes per year? What's her salary? I, she could pretty much call her shot every year, right? Probably. She's, like, she's making like a million dollars a year? I think she's making half a million at this point. Because okay. she's his executive assistant at this right. point. I think she has an unlimited checking account. Though. But it doesn't matter because anything that... She she has access to whatever she wants. I mean, she you know what I mean? But I think she's making a half a million dollars a year. Because she's been she, with him for a long time at this point. She has his back pocket of... Tony, there were some inappropriate interactions with us. So well, I'd like I, $5 million you, a year. Yeah. she do whatever she wants. And by the way, she becomes the CEO of the company pretty soon. Tony, it took me two hours to get that October 2007 Maxim model out of the house. Uh-huh. I'd like knows, another $5 million. Yeah, which is, also makes her a good candidate for a wife because there's nothing you have to break to her at the end. She already knows it all. She wants you. She was, she's there for you. Or that's why they can't ever really get married because... They get married, and then on the honeymoon, all of a sudden, she starts laying into him about some of the some of the things she saw. And he's like, what did I do? Can I get this annulled? Did uh, Jarvis create AI is my next question. Did Jarvis create AI? The AI that we have now that's starting to take over everything, and we'll be doing AI ads on the Ringerverse with your voice in about a year. It's, it's going to be great. This guy. You're going to be great. They're just going to take your voice. <laughs> this is putting it on. Hey, um, this is Van Lathan. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, maybe. I mean, he's very sophisticated AI. You could talk to him. He becomes a real person. Jarvis becomes a person. What movie was that? It's Avengers Age of Ultron. Jarvis, the computer Jarvis. Yeah. You ever heard of the character Vision? No. <laughs> so, in Avengers Age of Ultron, Ultron is... Uh, AI that Tony and then built and then Ultron corrupts Jarvis. Jarvis gets fixed and when Jarvis gets fixed, they take Jarvis and they put it into a bioorganic body and Jarvis becomes a member of the Avengers, the Avengers uh, known that as That sounds Vision. like a stretch. It's facts. Okay. It's what happened. And he, Vision, then has a relationship as a machine with a human woman. Wow. Scarlet Witch. I had what happened to Tony. You don't give a fuck about anything that was just said. No, I I listened to it. It's it's like you asked the the question, and then the answer was such nonsense to you that I could see. This is where I have issues with the franchise, where they they just make up anything. It's like, and then he took his head off, and he was replaced by a centaur. And it's just like, that's okay. It's the Marvel Universe. Anything can happen. (sighs) Yeah, I think I was scarred by the two Superman movies. With mm. the time of my life when I saw them, made me think I didn't love this world in, in the right ways. Those movies are really good movies. Though. No, I know they're really good movies, but it really bothered me when he gave up his superpowers. He got them back. Like, I know, like but it, I just... 30 minutes. Though. I know, but I didn't like it. Not even 30. Um, What's the best double feature choice of this movie? You know what you could do? You could do a 2008 double feature. You could do Iron, Iron Man, Man Dark, Dark Knight. Knight. The peak of, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Andy Red Zawatne Award for what happened the next day. We kind of know what happened yeah, the next we day. We know what that happened every single table. day after in his life. What piece of memorabilia would you want from this movie? What about the first electromagnetic heart jumper thing that's in the frame? Although I guess he broke it. Dog. It comes back. It at the end of Endgame, 
that first heart comes back. <laughs> yeah, when Tony is killed, she Pepper eventually has that framed. And around it, she says, proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Like, like she actually has it. She does a thing. And then at the end of Endgame, when Tony dies, they Does put Tony it die because he had food from Goop? <laughs> <laughs> he had a bad soy, <laughs> soy buffalo chicken. It might have been that same one. It might have been a different one that she framed. But she frames one of those things and she gives it to him. It says, proof that Tony Stark has a heart. And then at the end of Endgame, after Tony sacrifices himself, they put it in the water. Very sad. By the way, kind of a backhanded compliment. What? Proof that he has a heart? Yeah, somebody makes you a thing with the heart, that the thing on top of your heart that kept you alive, which I thought was a heart until 20 minutes ago. All right. And they frame it, and it says, proof that Tony Stark had a heart. Has a heart. Has a heart. Because you're keeping the shrapnel out of it, yeah. But that's kind of a dig. It's definitely kind of a dig. It's but... kind of a fuck you gift. It's like, oh, thanks for this gift. That's You're basically telling me I don't have a heart. Thank you. Thanks, Pepper. <laughs> she meant it as... A... It's their relationship, whatever. I know. That, that's <laughs> why they should have ended up together. That's the kind of thing your wife gives you after 10 years. They did end up together. Yeah. They yeah. got married and had a kid. What did they name the kid? Morgan. Did he have to hyphenate its name, like Morgan Potts Stark? No. <laughs> no, it's Morgan. Did she become Pepper Morgan. Stark or keep Pepper Potts? I th think she became Pepper Potts Stark, but they never really say explicitly. Craig, would you listen to this as a podcast where Van just tells me things that happen <laughs> in the Marvel Universe? Yeah, <laughs> sure. And then Van makes up one thing every pod and you have to guess which well, is fake. That's the thing. Because I could, cause I like could go anywhere. Show? I could be telling, I could be telling Bruce up, Bruce. I could be Bill. telling him or Bill. all kind. Bill, that all whole kinds vision thing right could now. have been made up. I could have made that up. <laughs> Can I like, confess like for something? Example, to like you? for example, for example, did you know that Matt Damon is in the Thor movies? Did you know that? That's not true. I know what Matt Damon's up to. Bullshit! It is true. He's in the Thor movies. Yeah, Who does Matt, he play? <laughs> Matt Damon cameos in the Thor movies as oh, an, he cameos in everything. He, cameos, he cameoed in the Road Trip sequel. He cameos in the. That was a crazy cameo. It was all time Scotty crazy. doesn't know. But like, but uh, that was, why did he do that? Has anyone ever asked him how he that happened? Friends with the, there was somebody wrote an article about it 10 years ago. He was just friends with the director. Oh. Yeah. Um, but no, he he played, he cameos as an actor in the movie that is really very funny. Is it bad that I didn't know Tony Stark died until five minutes ago? <laughs> This is, so, this is such blasphemy. I, I, wonder, love, I like Iron Man. I just don't want to be in the universe, but I really liked Iron Man. So how many total appearances from Tony Stark have you seen? Iron Man 1, 2, and 3. Okay. He's, he's in more movies? But I don't I think mean, I saw the other. I still haven't seen the Avengers movies. You haven't seen one Avengers movie? Not You saw well, Avengers. You saw the OG Avengers. The first one? Yeah, you saw yeah, that. But yeah, but that was like in the, but not any of the recent ones. They, how many have they made? I made four. There's been four. There's Avengers, Ultron. I think I took Ben of the original Avengers. Yeah. And I think he probably threw up in popcorn or something. Um, <laughs> what piece of memorabilia would you want? <laughs> Why do you do this? like that? Well, my kids didn't like Marvel. What do you want from me? <laughs> oh, what piece of memorabilia would I want? Um... I mean, you can't. You could say the suit. You could say the house. Yeah, the like, but those suit, are like the lame house, answers. Like, can't, yeah, the heart's I, a good really one. Thought of it. The heart's a good one, but uh, oh, you know what I like? I like Obadiah's little device. Oh, the earplugs. That yeah, the Obadiah's little device that fucks with you. And, we like, should have put that in what's age the best. I like the the weird devices that fuck with people in movies like this. Yeah, it's like. I always love stuff like that that yeah. just like incapacitates you that like spies have. Yeah. So Obadiah's little device where he it makes the sound and your veins come all out. I like that. That's what I would take. Coach Finstock award for best life lesson. Don't make weapons. But if you do make them, keep them to yourself. Because that's essentially what he did. He made... <laughs> he made a weapon that was better than any of the weapons that he made before, except now he uses it. My life lesson would be you got to figure out the Pepper Potts thing, Tony. This is what's going on here. How long has she worked for you? Nine years? Dog, they, she got, just they comes literally in. got married. I know. Well, like, that, right, that was they, the lesson. They literally got That's together the, lesson we the had. next movie. <laughs> what are you doing to this poor lady? She's coming in, <laughs> escorting your Vanity Fair reporter out of the house? Take out the trash every now and again. Who won the movie, Downey or Marvel? Because you can make a better case for Marvel, even though Downey wins this movie about as much as anyone can win a movie. But Marvel creates a whole universe out of it. It's probably Marvel, but he is so rich. He Could be is a tie. So rich. I think it's a tie. What do you have, Craig, for Downey or Marvel winning the movie? 
man, that's so tough. It's yeah. kind of the same thing. Yeah. Uh, he is so it, rich. But it's, yeah. I mean, for like where he started, it's probably Downey. And you know what the crazy thing is? Is like, we know so much about his career. Yeah. But to an entire generation of kids, he is like only Iron Man. Like we know so much about him because we were we were around with him for so long, but like for a whole group of people, it's like just if they Iron saw him at back to school, they would have like a seizure. Like, Jesus Christ! Like, like, what the hell? Weird science. I remember when he was in Weird Science, and the girls were they turned around and they didn't know whether or not they wanted to uh, continue to like talk to the guys. Yeah, and they were doing this behind their back. I've been knowing for, since the eighties, but like for most people, he's Iron Man. Craig, your Iron Man thoughts. You were psyched that we did a movie from the last fifteen years. By the way, I, met, I forgot to mention this is the fifteenth year, fifteenth anniversary of this movie. That's why we're doing it. I'm not a big Marvel guy either. I like them. I haven't seen all of them. I don't really keep up with like the backstory. But I, I, I didn't realize how good Iron Man was until I, I think I was 14 when it came out. I probably really liked it, but I probably haven't seen it since. And I think I liked it more. But you know, it's kind of funny that this movie, like Marvel did to superheroes, kind of what the Stark Industries is doing to weapons, mm. where it's like Jesus just kind of like the overspreading profiting oversaturation of something just for pure profit. Like they just beat weapons into the ground, made them like international, sold them everywhere. And then Marvel got to the same thing with superheroes. So Kevin Feige is Obadiah. He's Obadiah. <laughs> yeah, kind of he's, Cause he's not Stark. He's Obadiah. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good take. I'd be honest with you, man. It's like, you could put like Craig and Rob together on a podcast and it could be just about who can say the most insanely impactful shit in the least amount of words. <laughs> Craig, like, you, Rob Mahoney. Like, like Rob Mahoney. Craig, like Rob, we'll all be talking and Rob will just spit out like the theory of relativity or some shit like that. And it'll be like, that's it? I mean, that, that was perfect, but you don't have anything to more. Meanwhile, for me, completely not economical with my, my words. It takes a whole yeah. paragraph. To We're monologous. Yeah. And then that was actually a really good point, but he's been sitting there for the whole fucking time saying nothing. A good, good, <laughs> the, we don't talk podcast. Call it one paragraph podcast. Like, just a whole hour, people just get two sentences each to make their point. That's why the hottest take is for me. I love that pod. You love, it's, yeah, it's getting it comes in hot. He's yeah. a Dion Waiters kind of guy. He's a he's the Dion Waiters of the ringer. Looks this podcast different. was produced by Craig Corbeck. <laughs> um, we'll be back on Rewatchables next week. I don't know what movie we're doing, but I know Flight's, like, in, getting close to being in the mix, like, mm. pretty soon. Yeah. So, I'll just, I'll hit you up. Uh, Van. Thanks for being on the Rewatchables. Love it every time.